Hey guys, welcome to Red's Projects. This episode, I'm gonna be working on my power glide. Now, if you look carefully, nothing has changed since last video, which was two months ago. And the reason for that is besides being lazy and a lack of motivation, I needed some special tools to pull the piston out the forward clutch assembly and out of the reverse. And I just had other stuff I've been doing in the meantime, but this last week I made up a couple tools which I'll get to shortly and also I've bought a couple things here and there so I got an input shaft, a band and a few other bits and pieces so um, yeah I've got what I need to push forward and I've also got access to a lathe hopefully so I'll be able to machine stuff up myself and um, yeah those are just a few things that were um, keeping me from getting this thing together but um, we'll start with the tools so forward clutch assembly i need to get this piston out in here to machine it so i can fit more um, clutch plates in there you have to push down on this collar and pop out this circlet which i've already done but you need a tool to do it so this is a tool i made up it's just a washer uh, welded in a bit of stainless sit it like that put it in the press push down pop the clip out and then you can take the retainer off and pull everything out. So I'll pop the clip out to make sure the tool works, but I haven't touched anything else yet. We'll get into that shortly. And then you have to do the same thing in here. So that's what this special tool is all about. So we've got that guy, which goes on the end there, that pushes on the retainer. And then this part of it, I've shaped it just right. So it goes down in the grooves and then turns into the circlip groove like that and then you just tighten it up and it pushes down. And same thing, you've got to push down on the retainer, pop out the circlip, and then it exposes all the springs and you can get the piston out. And exactly the same thing as this assembly, I've just popped the circlip out to make sure the tools work and then I thought I'd leave it for the video. So I've got to pull that out, machine that, pull that out, machine that, replace seals, all that sort of crap. First thing I'm going to do is pull this guy out and work out how many clutches I can squeeze into this thing. And same with the reverse side, I'm going to work out how many clutches I can put into the reverse. Because not so much the reverse, but the this guy here, depending on how many clutches you can get in, depends on how much power or torque um, it can hold before it starts to slip. So we'll um, whip this apart, take some measurements and... Um, yeah, we'll go from there. We'll probably have to cut the video off and I'll um, take this to Ryan's work and machine it up, hopefully. And yeah, hopefully I can jam enough clutches in this to make it work. All right, let's pull this guy apart. So we go circlip, retainer. And then a million springs. Else. Okay. All right, and this should just pull out now. Look at that. That's nice and easy. Anything else come out? No, that's it. So that that's a little ball bearing. So we've got one seal here to replace. And then I think there's one on the inside. Yeah, there's one. You won't be able to see it, but there's one where my finger is, right there. All right, so I'll take some measurements and I'll work. I'll get some clutch plates and I'll work out how many clutches I think I can squeeze in there. All right, so after playing around and taking some measurements and that, I might be able to squeeze eight frictions and eight steels into this um, high clutch drum assembly. I'll be happy with seven and seven, but if I can get eight and eight, that might future-proof me if I end up changing the engine combo and, you know, you know what happens. But it looks like I've got enough clearance. I obviously have to do, I won't know until I machine this down and set it all up properly, but I might be able to get eight and eight. But um, hopefully I'll do that this week. We'll work this out. And yeah, once I get this done, um, I'll be real happy. But Let's have a look at the reverse 
clutch assembly and what I'm going to do there. And um, yeah, we'll continue on. All right, so let's look at the reverse piston. So we've got our, come on, come here, circle clip. We've got our retainer. Got a bunch of springs. Put them somewhere safe. I don't know if I'm reusing these. I think the trans brake valve body comes with stiffer springs or different springs. So I'll um, cross that bridge when I get to it. Okay, now this piston should just Pull out like the other one. Yep. We've got another seal on that. Anything else want to come out? That's good. I thought that was a crack for a second there. That's it. That's everything. All right. While I've still got some daylight, I'm going to go outside and um, pressure clean this case down. Because there's a couple of holes I have to drill in this, and it's just this thing's just filthy. So I'm going to take it out, degrease it, pressure wash it, and um, get it ready for the next part. All right, so I gave the case a quick clean, and now we're ready to drill, drill out some of these holes. Uh, this is the instructions that came with the valve body, and it tells you to drill out these two holes, which is this guy and this guy to 5 sixteenths and draw them all the way through to the back so we're to where the reverse piston is so they'll poke out there and there this sounds kind of wrong but it's to do with this um, pro tree um, double dump valve body trans brake setup I've got you'll see it ends up kind of like that and to remind you, with this um, trans brake valve body I've got, um, reverse won't work until you hold the trans brake button. So you put it in reverse, it'll just be like a neutral. You have to hold the trans brake button to go backwards. So these are some of the modifications that um, make reverse not work anymore in the normal sense. So anyway, we'll drill out those two holes first. Now, next thing it says to do is to drill this guy, which is this hole here. So this hole here goes through to this hole we just drilled before. And it says to drill that one to 5 sixteenths as well. This will intersect with hole A that was drilled in step two. So a hole there. It is already pretty big, so it shouldn't take much effort. Let's just give it a go. It only has to go to this hole. It doesn't go all the way through, otherwise it'll make things worse. There we go. That felt a bit brutal, but that was all we had to do. All right, so one more thing I might do um, the book recommends to drill and tap these out to a bigger size. So these are 1 8 MPT. It says to drill and tap them out to quarter MPT. So you run bigger fittings, bigger lines, and have more flow to your um, transmission cooler. I assume you want to drill out these two holes as well to make them flow a bit better, but see how we go with that. Other than that, the case is pretty much ready to go. Just need to deburr those two holes and then give it another clean, get the shavings out. That's all ready to go. Next thing I'll be doing is machining out, machining um, the reverse piston and the high gear piston, machine these two. So 
With any luck, you should see me operating a lathe right now. All right, welcome back. As you can see from that footage I just showed you, I got access to a lathe. Big thanks to Ryan and his boss for letting me use the lathe at their work. And I was able to machine up the pistons by myself, which I really wanted to do. I didn't want to outsource anything. So, high gear clutch, machined a fair bit off that. I can't remember the exact number, but it was something like um, 70 thou or something along those lines. And I've got it so I can fit seven frictions, seven steels, and my clearance is about 85 thou, which um, one reference I got was 10 thou per um, friction, which is 70 thou. And then the book as well, the books told me um, 100 thou, or well, thereabouts, up and down a bit. So kind of went in the middle, 85 thou, seems about right. We'll see how we go. Uh, reverse piston machined a fair bit off of that. I think that was about 75 thou that we machined off. And I can get five frictions, five steels, and the clearance is about 105 thou, I think, from, it, from memory. And that's the book says anywhere from 90 to 120. So really happy with how that turned out. So they're both done, ready to be assembled and put back together. I also pulled the pump apart. I just wanted to have a look at the gears, see how they were, and just give things a bit of a clean, clean the support up a little bit. Um, a little trick you can do to see how worn your gears are you put the gears together on a nice smooth surface grab the inside gear and pull it and it should drag the outer gear with it if it just pulls out then the gears are too worn these um aren't too bad they're probably a little bit a little bit worn there's a bit of movement there but they're still good enough that they drag the outer with it so i'm fairly happy with those and as well as that, I just gave everything a bit of a clean up and a paint, like the front pump, that was all rusty and stuff. So I just gave it a quick coat of black paint, paint up the housings because they looked absolutely terrible. And just gone over a few things, got a few bushes to replace and just wrapping my head around all the seals and stuff I have to do. But we're getting really close to putting this thing back together. All right, that's it for this episode. I've got a bit more to do. I'm gonna get everything ready for assembly. I've got some bushes that I gotta tap out and tap in, some seals, go work out where all the O-rings go and do all that sort of stuff. And just make sure everything looks like it's gonna to go together. So next episode when I go to put it together, it will go smoothly, hopefully. We'll see how we go. But anyway, that's it. Thanks for watching, I'll see you next time.